We are I. One of the benefits that I have seen that I think that came out of COVID that isn't really fully realized yet, that's not actualized in today's landscape because we are still living this postmortem of just absolute disarray because of COVID. But when you when you look at the forest through the trees, I think one of the primary things that happened out of COVID in regards to the medical industry is a lot of people, including myself, really got our eyes opened up to how how corrupt medicine is. Now, this is something that I've known for a long time and was one of the primary reasons why that I started this podcast. You know, it's just to highlight how corrosive like the medical industry is. How when you walk into your doctor, you expect, and I think at one point in time in its origins, it did. Where you looked at this person and you said, I trust you, you know more than me, and I need you to take care of my health. And over the course of the decades, that just got corrupted more and more all the time. You know, and I do fault some healthcare professionals, wholly and absolutely, because when you meet them, you can tell that all they want to do is just get you, they pump you with drugs and get you out of there. There's no actual reasoning behind it. I would rather a doctor give me the same old thing that I know to be tried, tested, and true. The medication that has no side effects and the medication that works. And when they write on that prescription pad, I need you to get plenty of rest, drink lots of fluids. And like, okay. Because that's tried, tested, and true, and it doesn't have any side effects, and really is exactly what our bodies need. It's just the opportunity to do what it do does best. Our body knows we are the byproduct of you know millions and millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of years of evolution. We know our bodies know. Now, do we need sometimes? Do we need a little bit of help? Absolutely. But I think the definition of Western medicine is really starting to change. And I see this with a lot of progressive doctors, doctors who know Western medicine needs to change, how Western medicine got way too balls deep in, you know, the the pharmaceutical industry. And this is very much how you can see that the culture right now is getting far too woke. It went way too far to the other side, and a lot of that stuff is being exposed. And that's what COVID did for me. It made me realize how corrupt the medical industry really is and how far off the track the medical industry really is and how doctors don't have the ability to be able to think. It's like they went to school for all these years, and because they were constantly told, this is what you need to know. This is what you should learn. This is the information you need to know. This is where you go to get your information. But it seems like they didn't teach doctors how to critically think. Because they kept forcing them with information. And this is what you have to know. And this is this book. This is this textbook. This is this avenue for information. They never taught them to go critically think. They only taught them how to be able to regurgitate. The scary part about this is it's widely accepted. This is not Blake's bro science opinion. It is widely accepted that by the time that the average doctor graduates, by the time that the average doctor is a doctor who is fully licensed and can participate in the medical community, everything that they know is outdated. Never mind to the fact that the one of the the two other biggest things besides drink plenty of fluids and get plenty of rest, the two other things that we know that can almost absolutely, I would say, cure in in air quotes, really big air quotes, with the caveat that 
I'm using that as a generalized term. But we know outside of those two things, drink plenty of foods and get some rest, that have the greatest impact, like multiple fold, multiple X increase in positive outcome is dietary changes and exercise. And I guess we could even take that as far as just simply getting fresh air. Because with fresh air comes a lot of other positive things like sunshine for vitamin D, you know, lowering your blood pressure by being out in nature, the new grounding, blah, blah, blah. So if we have these things that have these four high, big, very, very big ticket items that have profound impact, drink plenty of fluids, get plenty of rest, dietary changes, and exercise. Why is that not being widely prescribed? And this is where you see now, especially in BC, outdoors is literally being prescribed. How fucking sad is that? But that's those are doctors that I want to see. Doctors that are just like, yes, you know, just another prescription is not going to fix this problem. If my patient has been coming to me for multi months and multi years for pain medication, more likely than not, this patient is addicted to the painkillers. And if they're not addicted to the painkillers, don't you think there's a fucking problem that this person has in, been in pain for multi months and multi years? And maybe you should do a little bit more to be able to help solve this problem because that's your job. You know, this is this is something you see. Like you see this movement of doctors of progressive healthcare, which has actually turned our model of just sick care, not even sick treatment, back into what being a doctor should be is health care. I would even like to see doctors, and there's starting to be a vast amount of government-sponsored propaganda that discourages people from clogging up our healthcare system because they just like to go to the doctor. You and I all know people like this that just seem to like to go to the doctor. And I understand the whole concept behind like routine annual checkup so that you can catch things beforehand so it costs the medical system less in the long run. I get that. But the problem is, is that it's caused this mentality that you need to go to the doctor even when there's nothing wrong. And we all know this. We all know that there's a mass abuse of our medical system in the mentality of prevention. But the problem is, is that when you go there, when you go there for these annual checkups, when you abuse this medical system, especially what we have in Canada, because you don't get a bill for it, is that there's there's nothing that encourages these four key principles. Drink plenty of fluids, because we know in North America, Western civilization, that over 70% of the people are chronically dehydrated, even though over 80% of your body, including your brain and your heart, all your vital, vital organs are made up of water. But over 70% of the people are chronically dehydrated. And who knows what this statistic is for people who are, you know, chronically underslept, which I'm sure that is very large too. So if you just tackle those two things, drink plenty of fluid and get some rest, that's your ongoing prescription. How much could we prevent with that? Not just going to the doctor and then being like, oh, seems like everything's okay. It's like, no, no, motherfucker, you are chronically dehydrated. That is not okay because it leads to all of these things. You're going there for prevention, not just somebody's paycheck. But they're not actually preventing anything by you going for your annual checkup when they're, when they're saying, oh, yeah, you know, like things are okay, but are they really? Well, what is your diet like now? If you are 10 pounds overweight now, do you think that that trend is more likely to increase or decrease? But what is your doctor's responsibility? To cut that shit off at the head. 
I see the way you're going, motherfucker. Let's change this. Let's course correct this ship. But no, they don't sit there and write a prescription for you to drink more water. They don't write prescriptions for, you know, increasing or having any kind of thing that's um, increasing your electrolyte levels. They don't do anything for writing a prescription for more sleep. They don't do anything for writing a prescription, you know, for dietary changes. They don't do anything for writing a prescription for more exercise. They don't do anything for writing a prescription to decrease your alcohol intake. They don't do anything to write a prescription for, you know, to quit smoking. Well, maybe that one. I should give them that. Because there most likely is. But, you know, we see these things. We see these things that could easily be wrote a prescription. Now, could you listen, look at it from this fact. If you have a doctor that says... You know, I think that you need to get some more exercise versus actually writing you a prescription for exercise. So if you want to lessen the burden on our healthcare system, why don't doctors have the ability to be able to write a prescription to go see a kinesiologist or a personal trainer or somebody who can lead you down, create a routine, establish a routine for exercise? Why? Why not? Why can't a doctor write you a prescription to go see a nutritionist, a dietitian? Why not? Why can't they? It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. So I like to applaud COVID in this regard because it really seems like it opened up the eyes of the average person and the medical industry because it gave a voice a really strong voice to champions like Dr. Asim Mahotra and a lot of these professionals that are willing to stick their neck out and say, this is the corruption in the medical profession worldwide that we've been talking about for days, weeks, months, years, decades. This, like if you're willing to see it, it's right there. So open up your eyes. So the question of the day is, why do you think doctors don't actually try to prevent the burden on our healthcare system? When you go for your annual checkup that healthy people don't necessarily go for, why don't they actually work on preventing it instead of simply just writing their own paychecks? Because you know that doctors all say they're chronically overworked. Well, look, one of the ways to be able to take that burden off, and maybe even when you show up at work, you have the ability to be able to practice actual health care because you start to filter in some of the real problems people are facing, not the, not the bullshit problems. But you actually, as a doctor, can exercise your capacity to practice medicine. So... Where's the responsibility on the doctors of the world to be able to start to course correct instead of just falling into the same old bullshit cycle of just seeing X amount of patients every day and just giving the same bullshit and be like, no, I want to prevent you from actually having to come here. Because if we do the proper prevention cycle, do people even have to go for an annual checkup? What if you could shift that into... You know, in every two-year checkup because your population is just that healthy. Who knows what that could look like? But it's real. I guarantee you that that is real. I guarantee you that healthy human beings do not have to go to the doctor once a year for an annual checkup. 